Well, hello everybody and welcome to today's success story interview where we're going to be talking with Daniela about her journey through medicine and to a successful match in residency. So we're extremely excited to get started. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today, Daniela. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, first, you can start out by telling us a little bit about your medical education, where you went to school, and maybe some important notes from your uh, medical school time. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I went to medical school in Medellin, Colombia. I went to medical school in Universidad CES. Um, and we do six years of medical school right after high school, like a lot of other places in the world. Uh, during the time I was in medical school, I knew kind of since the beginning I wanted to do residency in the US. So I started working in kind of some of the aspects of the application, like research, volunteering, um, and planning my visits to the US to do some uh, clerkships there and stuff like that. So what particularly drew you to wanting to pursue residency in the United States? Yeah, I guess the opportunities it gave me. Um, I really like oncology. Uh, that's kind of what I like the most. And uh, in the US, there's a lot more opportunities for research, a lot of more mentors. Uh, and so that was something that really drew me into residency in the US. Uh, other aspects are just kind of the lifestyle that people have in, in the US was something that I was very, very interested in. Uh, and so I think it was a combination of all of those things that made kind of uh, my decision. Yeah, perfect. So tell us what specialty and program you got into then. Yeah, I got into internal medicine at uh, B.I. Deaconish Medical Center in, in Boston, which is one of the um, associated uh, Harvard Medical School teaching hospitals. So I'm very, very happy. Great. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, was that high up on your rank list or where, where did that fall for you? Yeah, it was actually my number one. So I was very, very happy. Perfect. That's amazing. Um, so when you were getting started with the residency application process, what was on your mind? You know, were you concerned about anything in particular? What was your game plan coming into everything? Yeah, no, I was very, very concerned. I guess uh, it's a very stressful time um, after you do your steps and are done with that like first stressor, I guess, of the whole process. Uh, the application part is... I think the next step that is very stressful, um, deciding how many programs to apply, uh, kind of which programs would fit best with your profile, which ones maybe not, um, deciding on how to fill in the whole ERAS application, where to start on your personal statement. I think those were kind of my major stressors back then. Yeah, and did you end up using any services to help address some of those aspects like finding which programs to apply to or helping with personal statements or anything? Yeah, so I used Match a Resident uh, a bit, especially in the um, like searching for different opinions about the programs and searching for certain characteristics about the programs. And so I used their list about the different programs and about like what the experience of other people who had interviewed in those programs was. And so I narrowed a little bit my list using that. I also used uh, Resident Explorer to kind of look a little bit into um, each different program. Uh, and of course, the help of other people who had already been through the process, who were from my same medical school and kind of um, where they applied, where they interviewed and stuff like that. Perfect. And so what were you looking for in terms of programs? What really interested you when you were researching programs? Yeah, so I think the two greatest determinants for me were uh, location and uh, the type of program. I really wanted a university program. 
Um, I want a really academic program because I am really interested in the kind of uh, education portion and research portion of um, kind of internal medicine programs. So I wanted to go for programs that were very, very strong academically. Um, I also wanted like the East Coast mostly, or maybe California programs. Um, I didn't want to go like to certain parts of the US just because uh, I wasn't as comfortable living in certain states as I was in others. So that was also something that I, I used to, to kind of filter uh, how many programs I was going to apply to. And how many programs did you end up applying to? So I, I applied to a lot. I applied to 130, I, I guess. At the end of the day, stress um, is a big factor because sometimes you're a little bit scared to apply to less programs. And uh, I think that that was a, a determinant for me. And so I applied to more just to be safe on my options. Definitely. And something you were saying was that you were looking for more of the you know university-based programs, which can be harder to get into. And it seemed like you had the USMLE scores to get that done. Yours were pretty strong based on our um, conversation. So do you have any tips or input how you got, you know, such great USMLE scores? Yeah, I guess uh, my greatest tip for USMLE is to kind of change your mentality on the test. Um, sometimes we think we know how to study because of the way we studied in medical school. And this is a completely different thing and a completely different game. Uh, I think my greatest advice is to do a lot of questions. Um, that is the most important thing that you can do when you're studying for any of the steps. You have to familiarize yourself with the way that they ask. You have to familiarize yourself with um, kind of the way that you're supposed to narrow down your options. And I, I guess the best way to do that over time is to do as many questions as you possibly can. Uh, I think another aspect would be to kind of have a timeline on when you are getting your steps done and kind of follow that timeline uh, because that gives you a little bit more discipline when you're studying. And I guess those are the main things that worked very well for me. Perfect. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Did you have a specific question banks that you used or books? to help facilitate that type of practice for you? Yeah, uh, so for each step, it was a little bit different, but overall, like the biggest thing is UWorld. Uh, I, I think everyone knows that. Um, I did UWorld several times for each step. Um, and then I used uh, other banks, Ambos. I used USMLE RX, uh, kind of to get a little bit more questions and different types of questions. Um, I also use the, the books, the first aid uh, for every, every step. But the main thing is uh, UWorld. Uh, on step one, I also used other kind of resources like Sketchy for micro and pharma and pharmacology, I think. Um, they were very, very useful, especially for like those memory things that sometimes we forget very easily. I also used uh, Pathoma. I think it helped me a lot because it was something that I had forgotten uh, a lot from medical school, like from my first years in medical school. Um, yeah, and so I think those were kind of my main, main resources. So it sounds like you definitely used a little bit of a diversity in terms of resources and practiced a lot and had a schedule and, you know, stuck to that discipline and it really paid off for you. So um, that will definitely be very helpful to a lot of people down the road. And I think that it's so important that people hear, you know, what it really takes to score well. And that really helps with the actual um, application process and feeling more comfortable applying to the programs you're interested in. Um, so when you actually got into the ARIS application and you know, uploading your documents and everything. Did you run into did you run into any hiccups or challenges with uh, filling out the experiences section or hobbies or you know uploading your documents and things like that into Eris itself? 
Yeah, so like the technical aspects of Veras are, are very simple. Like it's a very simple kind of website where it's very easy to kind of fill everything out. So I didn't have any like technical problems in that aspect. Um, I had a little bit of like of difficulties in the beginning, uh, kind of learning what to fill in each kind of portion of the uh, Eras application because it's a little bit kind of different to what I was accustomed in my own country. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I kind of use the experience of others to kind of help me fill in uh, the information in each portion of the application to be kind of short, but to give kind of a good understanding of what you did in your like experiences, in research experiences, in volunteering experiences, and in work experience. Uh, and to kind of understand um, the mindset of the people who were reviewing the applications and to know that they were probably going to review thousands and thousands of applications so that uh, each sentence had to have like a lot of importance. And uh, I think that helped me a lot, not only in the application portion, but also like in the personal statement as well. Yeah, I, I really hope everybody who's applying to residency hears that because that's so important to be detailed but concise. Yeah. Uh, it sounds yeah. like you really found that formula successfully. Um, so for your letters of recommendation, did you waive your right to see them or how did you go about obtaining your letters? Was that an easy process? Were people happy to write them for you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the first portion of like getting letters of recommendation is uh, doing like US clinical uh, clerkships or observerships. Uh, I guess those are the strongest letters, um, the US letters. Uh, and so I did my clerkships uh, back in medical school. Um, and so after each of my clerkships, I would ask my attending like if they would be willing to write me a letter in like two and a half years where I was going to apply. So it's a little bit difficult because you know it's going to be a long time um, until they write you your actual letter. Uh, but I kind of stayed in touch with them and kind of shared with them uh, each step of my process. And I think that helped a lot to kind of maintain that relationship that I had generated with them. Uh, at the beginning, it, it, of course, it's a little bit awkward asking them for letters of recommendation, especially because um, a lot of the times you don't know if they really, really liked you or if you were just like a normal student for them. Um, but at the end of the day, it worked out, it worked out for me. Uh, I waived my right to see the letters. I think that tells the programs that you really trust the, the person who is writing them. Uh, and I think that's extremely, extremely important because otherwise you can kind of uh, see what the person is writing and decide if you want to use that letter or not, which is kind of not the point of letters of recommendation. Um, that part is a little bit stressful in the application because it's something that they kind of upload. And so a lot of the times they take a long time uploading them and that generates a lot of stress. Um, but yeah, just be patient, um, write them uh, enough emails so that they remember because of course they're very busy, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it works out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's golden. We, we tell people so much that you have to start asking for those letters of recommendation early on because it takes time yeah. for them to write, it takes time for them to upload, you have to remind them and sometimes they might not know how to do it. So yeah, <laughs> there's exactly. definitely some challenges that can uh, come along with that. Did your letter writers reach out to you when they were actually writing the letters and ask for clarification about like experiences you might have had? Or did they feel like they had enough information based on your communication from the previous year or two to just write the letters for you? So with some, I had a, kind of a closer relationship that, than with others. So the ones that I had uh, the closest relationship with um, didn't really ask for any extra information. Uh, they were people who wrote letters of recommendation very often in uh, the places where I did my clerkships. And so they kind of had the experience of writing letters and it was very easy. 
there was one uh, that kind of told me that we should kind of meet up again through Zoom and kind of talk a little bit about my goals, kind of, of what mm -hmm. I was doing at the time. So uh, with that, when I did that, and uh, it was great because I, I could give him a little bit more detail of uh, what I had done since we last saw each other and kind of what were my plans in the future so that he could incorporate it into, into the letter. So that was very, very useful for me to have that conversation with him right before he started writing the letter. Perfect. And so how many interviews did you end up um, receiving or in interview invitations after you sent out your applications? Yeah, so I received uh, 30 uh, interview kind of invitations, uh, which was incredible. <laughs> I, I honestly, yeah, I, I didn't expect so many, um, but I was very, very happy. Uh, I think the virtuality helped me a lot because I did, I think I did 24 of them, which was incredible. And it was something that in-person interviews probably wouldn't have allowed me to do so many. <laughs> right. uh, and so, yeah, no, at the end of the day, I think the virtual aspect of it wasn't really kind of a challenge for me this year. Did you do anything to prepare for the interviews before you took them? Yeah, I think um, it, it's, it is very nerve wracking at the beginning because of course it's something new. You don't know what they're gonna ask. Um, so what I did was I kind of used a list of like the most common interview questions during residency and kind of practiced the way that I talked, my English. Um, I practiced the way that like I looked like in a Zoom conference and like my verbal language. Um, and I did that with a friend for a while. Uh, but it comes a point where you have to be spontaneous uh, and at the end of the day, you don't know what they're going to ask. So the practice kind of gives you a little bit of tranquility of mind. But um, yeah, I think at the end of the day is just to be relaxed and to know that the persons who are interviewing you, uh, they just want to know a little bit more about you. It's not going to be a horrible experience. Um, I never felt uh, attacked or judged. It was actually an amazing experience for me and um, I felt more relaxed as each interview came uh, with like the with as the season kind of moved on. Mm -hmm. Did any questions come as a surprise to you that they asked something you weren't expecting? Um, not really surprises, but uh, I guess my advice is to know that everything you put on your application is fair game for them. Uh, so you have to really know your application very well. You have to kind of look back at your research. If you did research five years ago or like a long time ago, kind of my advice is to like read it again, kind of remember what your mindset was when you were doing it, because they might ask you about that and you have to kind of be ready for those types of questions. Uh, they will ask you about your hobbies. So right. be sure to put like your actual hobbies there because a lot of the times um, it happened to me kind of the uh, interviewer asked me about a hobby and they had that same hobby so we talked a lot about it um, and so that is very important. Do you mind sharing what you put down for your hobbies in the heiress application? Yeah yeah of course um, I really like uh, playing tennis. So okay. that was one of the hobbies that I put. Uh, I really like modern art. So that was another hobby. Um, what else did I put? Uh, and then I put like the normal ones. I like to exercise. I like to read books. I actually put like the last book that I read uh, just in case the interviewer had read it or knew it. And hobbies are a great kind of icebreaker um, and kind of decrease the tension of interviews, I think. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like you put a little bit of detail with each hobby rather than just yeah. listing them out. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so once the interview season was kind of in full swing, were you doing anything to reach out to programs or follow up with them, like after interviews or more 
closer to the rank time? Uh, so it, it kind of depends. Uh, a lot of the times programs actually tell you it's not kind of useful to send them uh, kind of post interview kind of emails thanking them that is not necessary. And so uh, if the program told us it wasn't necessary, I, I wouldn't do it. I just kind of hoped for, for the best with that program. Um, in some programs, I did kind of send like thank you notes to to the persons who were like interviewing me if I really, really liked the program, but they were very short and kind of uh, very concise, just like, thank you for the opportunity to interview here. I really enjoyed our conversation and that was it basically. Um, I didn't kind of follow up more uh, with any of the programs uh, just because um, kind of I, I kind of understand how the process goes in interviews for them. Uh, and they probably kind of do their own like rank list based on a lot of aspects of your application and then move on to like the next group of interviewees. So um, I don't think it's going to really change a lot uh, how you get ranked in a program based on like your communications with them after your interview. Mm -hmm. So you didn't send a letter of intent to the program you matched with that they were number one or anything? No, no. Um, during the interview, I, I told them I'm very, very interested in this program. Uh, it's one of the programs that I like the most. Uh, and like at the end of the interview, I, I told like the person who was interviewing me, uh, I really think uh, I would uh, be a great fit here. I felt really good interviewing with you. and that was kind of the way I expressed that it was like my top choice. Uh, but no, I didn't send like things directly telling them uh, how my rank list was going to be. Mm -hmm. So overall, do you feel like you had a high point or a low point in the season in terms of your maybe hopes or expectations or maybe something challenging that came up that you weren't expecting? Uh, I think that the first interview you do is going to be the most nerve wracking. Um, I personally recommend um, like scheduling like a place where you, you like the place, but you don't, it's not like your number one or the place you like the most, just to kind of know what it's like and kind of know what to expect um, of the interview process. And then I would recommend uh, people to do like the interviews that you like the most right in the middle of the season because you've had a little bit of experience, but you're not burned out by like the whole process, which is something that really happened to me at the end. I was very, very tired um, and kind of I wanted everything to be <laughs> finished. And um, yeah, I guess it's just to be patient to go like one day at a time and uh, it's going to be over one day. <laughs> yeah, one day, one day. Uh, was yeah. there anything in particular that helped keep going in terms of just like your emotional state and making sure that you felt grounded and, you know, energized to actually be able to keep going through the process? Yeah, I think something that helped me a lot was kind of to uh work out and do my hobbies um during like the times where i didn't have any interviews uh another thing is kind of to move on from the like previous interviews uh, like right after you finish the interview uh you wonder like was it good was it bad did they like me did they not um i wonder if like i gave a good impression or not and um my advice is to do that for that day and then just like forget all about it and kind of move on to the next one, because if not, stress starts to build up and uh, it's it's very hard because you actually don't know uh, how you did. So, so I think uh, that was something that really, really helped me to kind of stay calm and um, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it's pretty good advice to not hold on to it and be able to you know do your best and then reflect on it that day and then you know keep going and just be able to keep moving forward with the process um so you've been giving such amazing advice this whole interview i feel um 
strange asking this question almost, but do you have a number one piece of advice that you would give or something that you might do differently if you had to do it again? Mm, I don't really have something I would do differently, but like my main advice is to do like every step of the process with time and like think it through very well. Uh, I think that's my main advice. Um, if it's studying for steps right at the beginning of the process, because for a lot of us, that's kind of the first thing that we do. Uh, take the time to plan out how you're going to study, take the time to plan out with what resources are you going to study, how are you going to measure kind of how you're doing and when you're going to take the exam. Uh, and for the application process, letters of recommendation, personal statement, and like the experiences, take the time to plan out each aspect of the application process, when you're going to get that done during medical school or, or after medical school. Uh, and when you're describing each thing, uh, really take your time, uh, edit them, uh, tell a lot of people to look at it and to kind of make sure everything is, is just right. Because at the end of the day, I think that details are the thing that is most important in, in, the, in the whole process. And it's kind of what is gonna make you successful in it. Well, I definitely 100% agree with everything you just said. So I hope a lot of people hear that and take that advice to heart, giving yourself the time to get started with the process and plan things out yeah. and do things intentionally and deliberately and do them well can make such a big difference. Um, so I guess my next question is, is there anything in particular that you are hoping to bring to medicine or a vision you have for your upcoming career after residency or even during residency? Uh, so hopefully I'll do great in residency. Uh, I really like uh, hematoncology, as I said. So my main goal for residency is fellowship after uh, finishing. Um, I, I really like the academic portion of medicine. So I, I would love to stay in like an academic institution and kind of um, be surrounded by people who are always learning and always kind of innovating. I think that's an amazing experience and an amazing environment to work at. Uh, I think for now, those are my main goals and uh, we'll see kind of where life um, takes me. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now. Perfect, well, that's really amazing. and. We wish you the best. I'm sure everybody in our community wishes you the best for residency and everything that's going to happen in your life and career beyond that. Um, is there any closing thoughts you have before uh, we um, end this interview? Uh, yeah, I guess like my closing thought is um, anything is possible during this process. Any program uh, of any specialty is, is eventually possible. and. Uh, an IMG somewhere in the world has uh, been successful at it. Uh, so don't give up, uh, ask for help. I, I asked for help, like I asked so many, so many different types of people for help and everyone who has gone through the process knows how hard it is and it's probably gonna be able to help you and is gonna be willing to help you. Uh, and so just, kind of keep going it's a marathon so um have that in mind and uh it's gonna come to an end eventually and so yeah that's kind of my main uh final thought perfect well you've given so much incredible insight and advice throughout this entire talk today and we really really appreciate you taking the time to share your success story and we wish you all the success coming up in your career and thank you again so much for talking with us and we're looking forward to sharing your discussion with our community so thanks and have a great day thank you thank you for for having me <laughs>